Disclaimer. Just because we do it doesn't mean you should. Ah, oh, shoot. I just realized. Oh. I think I totally forgot to show the exhaust in that, uh, that UL Power familiarization video. Totally forgot to show the exhaust uh, muffler thing collector. Darn. Hi, everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this here exhaust collector or muffler if you will we're gonna attach it to these guys right here I got the uh, I got the new seals on all of the exhaust tubes and they're nice and loose so we can fit this on here as best we can we, we are gonna put on the brackets and I've done a little bit of fiddling around already so uh, where we mount the brackets I've already uh, removed the nut for that got the bracket right here and what I'm gonna do is just put this on first and then attach the bracket. I think that'll work better than trying to have the bracket attached here and then it's just another thing I gotta work to get all these to match up. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of NICs on these rings. I mean around the around where the exhaust tubes go in. because because uh, we need a little bit of lubrication most of all to get everything on there and I guess it'll make it easier when it comes time to take them off theoretically let's just wiggle these guys in place we just gotta gotta use the standard rules of mounting things in place, which is minute jiggles and uh, small movements. Let's see here. Might need to loosen some of these. Just to make sure that everything can slide on how it needs to. It's actually already quite loose. Okay, now I'm going to attach these springs to the exhaust tubes. These are all the same. really tight. That is very tight. Let me do this one first. Ugh. Pardon me. You know what I need? I need something with a hook. Or, wait for it, maybe one of these. Let this work. Yeah, this would kind of work. Wow, that is really, really tight. That's a really tight spring. Oh, shoot, that's a problem. Okay. <sighs> Dang, those are some really, really strong springs, like stupid strong. Okay, I actually need um, something thinner here. 
Okay, this is thinner, so this might do the job better. That is a lot of spring tension. I'm bracing my foot against the the wheel there so it won't go anywhere. Also because I'm a pretty lightweight dude. <sighs> wow. Alright. You gotta make sure to hold that evenly so it doesn't slip. Because that's a, a lot of tension on there. go. I'm going to tighten down the uh, exhaust clamps before I forget because that would be bad to forget. So I just finished installing uh, this bracket, this uh, support bracket for the exhaust on this side. I filmed it, but I think my camera, uh, the memory ran out and it didn't save that video. Anyway, so I'll show you, I'll show you doing it on the other side. So it attaches right here. And because it's actually not a, there's kind of a, it's kind of a curve to it when this bolt pulls it tight. So it actually does uh, maintain separation from the cylinder cooling fins right there, which is good. And then this little, these little wires just kind of, they kind of bump up against it. So I think I'm going to just zip tie those back a little ways. And then I still need to put the hose clamp on this side. So let me show you just kind of doing it on the other side to give you an idea of uh, how to do that. So this is a, uh, it looks like a six millimeter hex drive. And this nut is a 13 millimeter. Oh, this is actually gonna be a little bit trickier to get to than on the other side. But I think we can still kind of do it. I got this twisty bendy adapter here. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, there we go. Good, good, good. I'm gonna unscrew this bolt a little bit as well. It might be a little dark. Let's let's turn on this light. Hopefully, give you. A, hopefully, you can see this a little bit better. I know it's kind of hard to it's hard to see stuff in these little engine compartment areas. So we'll put our bracket on here. 
let's see, how are we going to do this? We need to get this bracket down between, between these things, but something like... Oh, this is much easier than the other side. Oh, uh, I thought it was. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. That's good. And ah, we gotta we gotta back out this. Uh, we gotta back out this screw because we just don't, especially with the dipstick there, we just don't have enough room to bring the bracket over top of the screw. And now let's screw that back in. Yeah, that's good. Good, good, good. Alright, cool. Let's get our washer on there. <laughs> Again, I haven't really done myself any favors by putting in the oil breather lines, air the engine breather lines, or the air boxes, or anything like that before doing this process. But oh well, it's still doable. Actually, uh, how it is right there, I guess we could probably get this guy, or actually a long socket, 13 millimeter. Ah, I gotta organize all my sockets, all my metric sockets. I really do. In fact, I gotta, you know what? I need to reorganize this entire drawer. That's really what I need to do, because I mean, sometimes you need a tomahawk when you're building an airplane, but just not often enough, unfortunately. This is 12. I guess 13 is actually pretty large. 13. Let's see if this fits. would work better like this well I'll be dang look at that didn't even need the extender okay I'm tighten this down this side is actually easier than the other side I think all right that is good and tight excellent now let's find us some clamps some hose clamps and clamp clamp this baby down hey quick note from Adam from the future here if you are using the Zenith Cabin Air Heater Kit, I'm pretty sure that that's gonna go on the back of the exhaust manifold. And then you're gonna have a set of extra long hose clamps clamping over the heater shroud and, the, uh, and, and through the bracket supports to kind of hold everything together. I'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna go. Honestly, I haven't been looking at this for a while because I've been working on other parts of the airplane. So just something to keep in mind there. Okay, let's go back to it. Okay, all right, let's see. These look pretty hose clampy. And there's two of them. So that seems pretty legit. I think this is yeah, I think for some reason these were in like the fuel connection kit or something. I don't know, that's weird. Ooh, did you 
you look at that? Actually, that's not really the right size. Oh, these are small. These are like quarter inch or something. Probably quarter inch. Actually, whatever this is, 9.30 seconds. So we're just gonna clamp it around here, which is a pretty darn simple, but I guess effective method of doing this. And I'll clamp it down here, so that way it doesn't get in the way of our uh, our cabin heat shroud. This, we don't want this insanely tight, but we want it really good and tight so it doesn't rattle around. If this thing is rattling around, that could be very bad. That looks pretty good to me. Oh man, that looks good. Oh, so solid. So solid, so good. That's pretty fantastic, I think. Oh yeah, and you can also see here how when it's bent like that, when it's, oh. so you can see when it's bent in this way, it doesn't uh, touch the oil dipstick tube, which is nice. Although it does kind of put back pressure, but I guess it's kind of good because then it holds everything really, really tight. Excellent. All right, I went ahead and took the uh, the final exhaust tube here and I just stuck it on there and I used a hose clamp to hold these springs just to hold it in place temporarily so that way it's on here when we test run it and then uh, we can kind of figure out where we want it and adjust it and then we can eventually get those those little uh, clips welded on to the final exhaust tube but aside from that stuff it is good to go so cool Awesome. I hope I never have to take it apart again, but I probably will. So that does it for the exhaust system, at least for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.